regarding how to connect Dialogflow flow as an API endpoint with our Node.js server. And then later on you can connect your server with your front end so that you have a better or you know, boiler plates and security levels you can maintain over there. So and directly what happens, Dialogflow does not provide that customized UI. It does, but it's not that flexible. So according to the client request, you might have to create a, your, your own uh, customized UI. And uh, for that purpose, you might need a server to handle the requests, uh, user queries and everything. So in this scenario, what we are going to do, I'm going to use a Dialogflow API endpoint as an API. And then we have a Node.js server. Here you can see we will create a server and we will use Dialogflow. And this Dialogflow agent will be interacting with our Node.js server and we will do a testing using Postman. So what we will, what actually we're going to do through the Postman, we're going to send request body parameter what user is going to say. So let's say user says hi. So body parameters is going to be high and then we will make a request to Dialogflow using the Postman and we'll see how does it interact. We'll create an agent quickly and uh, we'll name it test agent. And uh, we'll keep everything as it is. Uh, default time zone as it is Google project. I'm gonna create a new project with this one and I'm not gonna set it as me mega agent So it will be like as it is and that's all we need you click on create So uh, we are creating a new uh, node.js server. You can go to your terminal and uh, follow along with me Let's create a server file here I'm assuming that you know a little bit uh, basics of how to create a Node.js server using Express Framework. It's a very basic thing we are doing right here. So you can go on YouTube, check out. I can put some link in the description if you need. Uh, maybe I can just uh, put some links over there which you can take a look at how do we create the Node.js server in some blogs or medium platform. That will be helpful. So now for testing purpose, let's create a get point and we'll see whether we are getting the request from there or not, whether our server is running uh, properly or not. So let's check this out. Let's create it. Let's post it send and this, that's it. I have from server. Let's run the server. Uh, before that, let's go to the package.js and create a start script so that we can run it with the single script. So I'm going to put the name of the script and then npm run start zero and we have df and then we have server so hi from server we get so means our server is up and running perfect so first step is done now let's integrate the body parser we need body parser so let's do that as well in uh, body require okay and then we might need when you will try to integrate this with the front end you need courses course policy uh, okay so we include the course as well now let's create routes and then df route so i'm gonna put routes separately from the entire section and we have to include this route in the server.js file let's quickly do that so once we do the routing here, so what we're going to do, we'll put the route endpoints in the route JS so that we have a segregation from the server file at least. We don't pile up everything in the server only. So that's why we need this. Now let's quickly install node body parser and course and the server. So now let's check. Now we are getting an error because we have not uh, exported anything from the route. So let's quickly do that. We'll create a post route text query and a simple request and then we'll send the text response and now let it should be working fine do we get it cannot get text query because the method is post so let's get it and then we should be getting things done okay well now let's try text query perfect so we're getting the response from the server and that's fine now now if you think we are going too fast you can play this video on the uh, you know slow down the speed we are going to create a function the chatbot js file basically we are going to create two function one is text query other one is event query just to handle the text queries and other okay, another okay, one is okay. so what is the use of that so if you'll go here any chatbot let's say an example let's take an example of eva which is for uh, this hdfc bank so if i say any query here and i send it so basically it goes to the server, it is in the front end, it goes to the server, goes to the NLP tool, whatever they are using, let's say they are using Dialogflow. 
that goes to the Dialogflow server first and then it calls out a function which could be anything to measure or to detect the intent of the customer. So the, detect of the uh, detection of the intent is basically what we do in the server side using the Dialogflow client. So next step is to create the Dialogflow client. So in order to connect with the Dialogflow, we need to create a Dialogflow client. That's what we need. So let's go to the npm package and install the Dialogflow npm package from there. And we'll see what else is required. So let's do the npm install. And along with that, it's required as well. Perfect. Now service account key, let's go to the GCP. I mean, let's go to the dialog flow. And from there, we'll go to the project and we'll go to the GCP instance for this particular project. From here, you can see, you can click on this and you come to the GCP project. Let's go and check the API and services, whether we have dialog flow API enabled or not. So let's go to the API services, search for, uh, we can search for <clears throat> dialog flow API. Let's search for that. And we'll see whether it's enabled or not. So it says it's enabled, right? So here, right here. So let's go back and we'll create a service account for this Dialogflow API and we will use it. So let's go to the credentials and create credentials. And then we'll create a service account, right? We'll provide some details. Let's say account name and then we'll provide uh, some basic details. So this is by default, you can keep everything as it is. You have to provide the owner role, or maybe you can provide the developer role, which have the read and write access to this dialog flow. And then uh, you can grant the access. So I'm gonna provide, uh, as of now, I'm just gonna keep it as empty because I'm using owner. So this is created. Now we need the service account key, the JSON key. So let's go to uh, the account and we'll go to the keys. We'll go on create the add keys and there if you have already a key you can upload it if not then you can create a new key i'm going to create new one json and then download that so we will and need this, this uh, file in order to now connect our dialog flow with our node.js server just quickly check and let's just keep uh, no. just so take a hi, look hi, at this so it's working so it works fine so, so now let's go to the terminal here, and, and we'll see, see that we have the key over here which has uh, our uh, data like Google project ID and other couple of other things. So in order to use those things, I'm going to create this dev.js file from there. I'm going to export a couple of things. So I'm going to name it project Google project ID. And uh, just for your instance, I'm just taking uh, uh, these all things from that file, which was downloaded. If you can see that test book, which is there. So from there, I took all these things. All I need is just Google project ID, private key ID. Uh, what else I need Google private key and client email all those things we needed from here so we took that and we are providing that in the dev key.js now once this is done what we need to do we need to import that file here so let's import it and we'll call it config so that we will use that config file here now from moving forward what we need to do is we need to create session client and we need to create session path so session client is basically the dialog flow client which we need in order to do the rest of the functionality so we need to provide the credentials from the config file to in order to create the session client or to initialize the client like the way we do in the firebase or any other uh, server cloud server uh, you know api or the client in twilio or in firebase so we need a couple of things we need google project id we are also providing i've added two things google dialog flow session id and session language code it's optional but i'm providing so that i can use it so uh, we need the private key we need uh, uh, we need the project id and we also need the session id for session id we can use google session id which we have here perfect and yes uh, what else we need to reuse the credentials so let's provide the credentials here yep. and uh, client id client email we need client email and also we need the project id so sorry uh, yes private key or yes just client email and then we need the uh, the google project id which we have oh, sorry the private key which we have and uh, we created that thing 
Now we need to pass this credentials to the session client. So we're going to pass it from here. So we need project ID and the second argument is credits. Now let's go and check whether we have the client. So let's create that function, the text query function. Go in that, we'll create a session path. In session path, we need to provide the uh, project ID as well as some session ID. Just for the each and every individual user, we need it separately. The session path should be different. That's why we are using the text and the user ID just to make it a separate for individual for each and every user. So once we create a session path, and then we pro create the request object quickly and it has a particular uh, format in order to in, in which we have to create it so we have to make sure that we are following that format for the request object so what we need we need a user text we need language code uh, that's optional we are providing it couple of op more options we can provide but i'm not going to do that let's quickly create the function uh, detect intent and pass this request object to that so i'm going to call it response i'm going to make a wait call session client dot detect intent and we're going to pass the request in that once we do that we'll be getting some response and let's console the response here for now and we'll see what happens in the console and also put a catch just in case we have any error so let's uh, also call that console.log error and we might wanna, for now, we might wanna return something here from here as well. We'll return the response. I'm, I'm gonna return that we have done this thing. Okay, so let's return everything from here. Okay, <clears throat> that's fine. Now, since we are printing that user ID and everything, so what we need to do, we need to um, uh, export this function as well, the text query function. So we'll, we're gonna export this function from here and we'll import it in the route file and uh, where we have the line number seven we will use that function chatbot dot text query in text query we're going to pass the text as well as user id which we are going to pass from the request body yeah perfect now uh, since everything oh yeah let's put a console.log and then we'll print what is coming for the uh, in the results everything is at its place we return the error from here yeah and instead of uh, text query in the return okay that's fine for now that's it's free that's free let's now run the server and see what happens let's okay everything is fine for now let's comment this let's run the server and when we run the server everything is fine let's go to the postman and put that url here localhost 3030 and that is our endpoint we provide a text query json body and uh, we're gonna send the text as well as we're gonna send the user id so let's send the text as well as user id so now user id is just page and some random text perfect now let's hit it and you will see could not get response because i am facing an error and this error is because maybe i didn't pass the body parser so i need to pass that so yes i need to do that okay let's now again try this Okay, I'm getting, still I'm getting an error. So this is because of the credentials. We need to pass the credential as it is, not the credits, my bad. So when I run this, I get a response. So you see in the response, I get a proper things. <clears throat> so let me just slow it down for a while. The query was high. Action was input welcome. We have fulfillment message, which is coming from dialog flow and all these things in the intent, we could see display name, which is default welcome intent, which is coming perfectly fine. If you want to go check over here, we have a, uh, we can create a new intent. We'll do the testing for that. Let's go. We call it booking and book the table. So let's, let's call it and let's provide some training phrase here. I want to book a table or something. So let's do that. So once uh, we go, let's say I want to book a table. I want to book a table for you. Let's provide a response as well so that we will be able to see. Sure. I can do that for you okay save it and then what we will do we'll go to the node.js server i mean our postman since our api is up and running we'll just change the text as the training phrase which we have i want to book a table for two let's hit the send button and we'll see we are getting text as a response is 200 let's go to the console and we see here that my text query is i want a table for two the fulfillment message says sure i can do that for you and in the intent we can see the display name is book table right so
so things working as um, as we want it now all we need to do is we need to provide the uh, correct format for the result so we'll create a result object and we'll provide the intent name we need which is request query result query sorry dot uh, dot intent and in that we have display name i did some changes in the function from the detect function whatever this that is returning so that is just returning me the result query in that i have the first element of the entire response so if you feel that you are not getting the same thing maybe you will have to just configure that result query which is coming from the intent detect intent function uh, the fulfillment text and that's it once we do that and let's now try to hit it from the postman will try to send this response as a result object that's fine now let's clear this and run the server again go to the postman and we'll see we're getting our response perfect so this is it that's all we wanted thank you so much for watching the video enjoy